This is the tutorial on parallel lines, transversals, and angles. Let's begin by talking about the consecutive interior angles theorem. This states that when a transversal intersects two parallel lines, both pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So let's take a look at the diagram off to the right. We have lines 1 and 2, and our transversal that's intersecting those two lines. And you can tell that lines 1 and 2 are parallel to each other because of the parallel arrow indicators. Now, consecutive interior angles occur when that transversal intersects two parallel lines, and it says that both the pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So remember that our consecutive interior angles are going to be angles like B and E. When you add B and E together when dealing with consecutive interior angles and parallel lines, they're always going to add up to be 180 degrees total between the two of them because they're consecutive interior angles. And C and H are also consecutive interior angles. And those two are also supplementary because of that theorem. They add up to 180 degrees. So you know that if angle B had a measurement of 130 degrees, you could automatically determine the value of angle E. You just take the 130 plus E and set it equal to 180 degrees because you know that they're supplementary. You could then subtract 130 from both sides and you'd arrive at E is equal to 50 degrees. So that's kind of a typical problem that you might see with consecutive in interior angles. Now the next theorem we should discuss is alternate exterior angles. These occur when a transversal intersects two parallel lines and both pairs of alternate exterior angles are congruent. So in this case we could look at angles D and F. So D here and F. Because of the alternate exterior angles theorem, we know that angles D and F are going to be congruent to each other. And we also know that angles A and G are going to be congruent to each other. And you can tell that they actually look congruent to each other just by looking at them. So if I were to tell you that angle A had a measurement of 35 degrees, you would know automatically that angle G has a measure of 35 degrees because of the alternate exterior angles theorem. And here's a little bit of further application to that. You could even go so far as to know the angle H now because G and H are a linear pair. So if G is 35 degrees because A was 35 degrees, then angle H must be 145 degrees. You can see how knowing these theorems can really help you fill in the missing angles on diagrams like this. Okay, let's move on to the last theorem, which is the alternate interior angles theorem. When a transversal intersects two parallel lines, both pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent. So that means that B and H are actually congruent to each other because of the alternate interior angle theorem. So if angle B had a measurement of 135 again, then angle H must have a measurement of 135. And you also know that angles C and E are congruent to each other because of the alternate interior angle theorem. The last thing I'd like to talk to you about is the corresponding angles theorem. The corresponding angles theorem states that when a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then the angle pairs that correspond to each other are congruent. And when they say correspond to each other, they're essentially saying the angle pairs that are the same created on each parallel line. So you can see, for example, with corresponding angles, that angle D and angle H are exactly like each other except one is formed on line 1 in the transversal and the other is formed on line 2 in the transversal. Also you would note that A and E are exactly like each other. So A and E would be corresponding angles so they're going to be congruent as well. 
A and C, as in cat, this C, are also congruent because of vertical angles, and E and G are congruent because of vertical angles. You'll also note that B and F are corresponding angles to each other. They look exactly like each other. Take a look at the opening of those angles. It's identical. So you want to pay attention to corresponding angles as well when dealing with parallel lines and transversals. So you're going to see a lot of problems where they give you just one or two angles in a diagram like this where a transversal cuts two parallel lines. And with the one or two angles that they've provided, you're probably going to be able to fill in the rest of the diagram, the other six or seven missing angles, because of these three theorems right here. So they're actually very important when you're dealing with parallel lines and transversals.